Thanks for joining me for MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. I'm Dan Adams. Today we're talking about why friction welding, part one. Friction welding in the United States started in the late 1960s. Caterpillar Tractor Company wanted to produce hydraulic cylinder rods uh, or piston rods such as these. The main challenge with this is many of these parts were made out of single piece forgings. Single piece forgings are very expensive to produce, especially when you have a lot of different part numbers. So when they analyzed the parts, what they found was they had a smaller number of eyes and clevises, and they wanted to be able to weld them to different lengths and diameters of bar stock, making a two-piece forging, which would be significantly less expensive to produce. The friction welding process allowed Caterpillar to rotate the eye or the clevis and hold the bar stock stationary. They had two problems, though. The first one was as they got larger and larger diameters of bar stock, the amount of torque that the process had would, would increase. This would cause the electric motor to stall that was driving the eye or the clevis. This was a similar problem that Caterpillar had with their diesel engine technology. As motors would stall, they would add a larger and larger flywheel in order to overcome that torque peak. The second issue that they had was spindle bearings don't like to be able to take force while rotating. So Caterpillar invented the hydrostatic thrust bearing which allowed us to, to go to higher and higher thrust forces uh, while the spindle was rotating. These two changes to the standard rotary friction welding process gave birth to the inertia welding process that we know today. Thank you for joining us for this episode of MTI's Whiteboard Wednesdays. For more information on this topic or other friction welding solutions, please visit our website at mtiwelding.com.